If you'd like to follow along, I'm going to be in Isaiah chapter 66, the last chapter of Isaiah. And I'm just going to read the first four verses. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye will build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? For all those things hath mine hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. He that killeth an ox is as if he slew a man. He that sacrifices a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offereth an oblation, as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense, as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they have chosen their own ways, and their soul delighteth in their abominations. I also will choose their delusion and will bring their fears upon them, because when I called, none did answer. When I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. Now, God has done, he is doing, whatsoever he has pleased. I'm going to put a period right there. Now you can take that however you want. And he has done whatsoever he has pleased on purpose. His purpose, not yours and not mine. Now this surprises some. This vexes others. But here's the thing, this fact that God does what he pleases, pleases me. I like it. I like it. You know why? Because I trust God and the world doesn't. You understand? I know that whatsoever the Lord doeth, it's right. It's not only good, it's right. It's the perfect thing to do. And I also know that whatever God does, nothing can be put to it. Nothing can be taken from it. And God does it, what? That men should fear him. And you know what? That pleases me too. Ah. You understand? I feel blessed to know that the omnipotent God reigneth. And that's who I want to talk to, talk about today to you, is the omnipotent God. Now, my title here, Paul, is Delusions, because of the statement in verse 4. I also will choose their delusions. Their delusions. I also will choose their delusions. And it's from verse 1, thus saith the Lord. Because there are multitudes out there right now who would love to limit the power of God. There are multitudes out there now who are saying that God is limited. They're wrong. They're wrong. Just say that right now. But specifically, what they want to limit, they say it's not his power. They want to limit his control. That's what it comes down to. They want to limit his control. Because I, you know, we can read it. I just quoted it. Our God is in the heavens. He has done whatsoever he hath pleased. And many will tell you, uh, no, he doesn't. Because he wants everybody to be saved, but everybody's not going to be saved. The fool says, no, God. And some around here, we have heard say in our presence, my God's a gentleman. He wouldn't force himself on anyone. 
Scripture says he reigns. Yeah. He rules. You understand? He says the king's heart's in his hand. And not only that, he turns it whithersoever he will. The scripture says he hardens whom he will. He has mercy and grace to whom he will, and whom he will, he hardens. And here's the best thing ever. The Lord God Almighty gives some men and some women a new heart that they never had before. And that's a wonderful thing. That's a gracious thing. Hear the word of the Lord today. I will also choose their delusions. Yes. That's just as true as you must be born again. Yes. That's just as true as today is the day of your salvation. Oh, hear the word of the Lord. Why do I want to say that? Because the world will not hear it. The world will not hear it. You know why? Because the world doesn't believe it. The world doesn't believe that the, the king's heart's in God's hands, and he'll turn it whithersoever he will. And they say, God, God wouldn't delude anybody. Now, let me get this out of the way first before we get too far into this. No, 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 I am not making God the author of sin. That sin's in us. Matter of fact, that sin is what we are. It's already there. But he said, and if you don't like it, that's your problem. And if you think that that makes God the author of sin, you're wrong. But he does say, I will also choose their delusions. Yes. And that's true. That's true. And that's not God being the author of sin. I don't care what anybody says. What that is, is the fact that they don't want to deal with the doctrine that God is sovereign right. in all things. What did he tell Joseph, or what, excuse me, what did Joseph tell his brethren? You meant it for evil. You meant it for evil. But God did it on purpose. He didn't say that, but on purpose, God did it for good. Even though it was an evil act that you did. Ah, you know, listen, God reigns. God rules. The world won't hear of it. The world doesn't believe it. And I can't help it if you don't like it. But this is the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord. That's what it says, verse 1, chapter 66. I will also choose their delusions. But I'm going to tell you something, because this statement for me explains a lot. Now, this is personal. It explains a lot. Just think about it. Just for me, just think about it. How could Pharaoh be such an idiot and run a country? You understand, after six or seven plagues, you might want to take a hint. But no. Pharaoh was king, and the king's heart is in the Lord's hands. He turns it with his whatever. And it says, God hardened his heart. I know that. But I'm going to tell you something. God chose the man's delusions. Now, I don't know for certain. I don't think there's anything in there, you know, in this, there may be something in history, but you understand back in those days, my wife was watching the history channel the other day. I warn her about that constantly, but she never listens to me, but she's listening she was watching and it was about ancient civilizations. And I walked in there, she'd been watching. I was in another room. I was at the computer working on a sermon or doing something, probably playing, but it doesn't matter. I walked in there and she says, it's supposed to be a program about ancient civilizations. And she looked at me and she said, all they've been talking about is religion. All they've been talking about the whole time. It's been going on for a half hour. And been through this bunch, and been through this bunch. I don't know, it was the Sumerians or whatever. They were on Egypt when I got there. And she says, all they're talking about, these guys want to be God kings. That's a delusion. I'm going to tell you that right now. There never has been a God king of a man. There's only one God. There's only one king of kings and lord of lords. That's Jesus Christ. But here it is. He's got, and then I thought about Nebuchadnezzar. And you understand, he wanted to be bowed to. He wanted to be worshipped. 
He said he was a god. He wasn't. And he found out. But I don't know what this delusion was as far as Pharaoh, but it says God hardened his heart. And then I thought about, what about the Pharisees and the Sadducees? You understand, Jesus Christ went around doing miracles, actual miracles, raising the dead, healing the lame, the blind, the man who had been blind from birth. They saw that some of them saw the miracles in person. Some saw the results of the miracles. And what happened? They rejected Christ. They rejected Jesus Christ. Why? I will also choose their delusions. Christ said of them, there'll be blind leaders of the blind. And what did he say? Leave them alone. Leave them alone. They're blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, what happens? They both end up in the ditch. I will also choose their delusions. They weren't looking to get in a ditch, but that's where they're going. They weren't wanting to go to a ditch, but that's where they're going. Uh, how could the people of Israel continually rebel against Moses and God? They've been delivered by a mighty hand. Out of Egypt, they'd gone out with gold from their former slave owners. And said, move, go away. Yes, you're free. Please leave. And then they saw the parting of the Red Sea and the drowning of Pharaoh's army. They saw manna fall. Manna showed up the next morning in the dew and fed them. Quail showed up from out of nowhere and fed them. And yet, every time you turned around, they were murmuring against Moses. They were murmuring against God. They were complaining that they wanted leeks and garlics and onions. And my soul loatheth this light bread. What? I will also choose their delusions. Their delusions. What did he say here? And will bring their fears upon them because when I called, what? None did answer. None did answer. And when I spake, they did not hear, but they did do something. What did, what did they do? They did evil before mine eyes and chose that in which I delighted not. Oh, my. Look at verse 5. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Now, he talked about those beforehand. That is, I look even to him who is poor of a and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Hear the word of the Lord, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified. But he, the Lord, shall appear, what? To your joy. And they shall be ashamed. They shall be ashamed. Now, that's the Old Testament. But guess what? No surprise. The New Testament agrees. It's in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Beginning in verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them what? Strong delusion. And I'm going to tell you this. It's a delusion that he's going to choose. Strong delusion. God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth. Well, here it is, folks, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You understand, these people that are deluded are not unhappy. 
They're happy in their delusion. You know why? Because their delusion fits right in with what's in this heart. What's in a, what an evil heart of unbelief. A heart that's deceitful and desperately wicked. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. But it does say, God's going to send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Mm. You understand? Because here's the other part I want to tell you. There are multitudes out there who would limit Jesus Christ. You know, the voice of God. The one who spoke the worlds into being. The one by whom all things consist. They would want to limit him. Here's the thing. How many people have you spoken to and told the truth and they just reject it out of hand? Don't even consider it. Don't even pause. Don't even think. Don't, don't read. Don't care. Don't want to hear any of it. I can tell you in my personal case, many, many, hundreds if not more. I, don't, I mean, you know. But what it is, they reject it out of hand. Why? They had pleasure in unrighteousness. They had pleasure in unrighteousness. Because here's the thing. If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Why? Well, I will also choose their delusions. But it hid to them that are lost, whom the God of this world has blinded their mind. They cannot see the glory of Jesus Christ. They cannot see the deity of Jesus Christ. And they really hate the sovereignty of Jesus Christ. You know, I, I mean, I understand. Uh, I, I had some problems with authority when I was younger. Not that I do now, of course, but... When I was younger, I was in the army, and they talk about, you have to listen and obey your superior officers. And I said, well, you find me one, and I'll talk to him. Because I was 17 years old, 18 years old, 19 years old, and I was an idiot. I didn't think anybody was my superior. I had some equals, maybe. But you understand, that was the state of my heart. I know better now. But this is the thing. It's in you, and it's going to come out. It's going to come out. And God shall send them strong delusion. Why? That they would believe a lie. They already believed a lie anyway. Oh, my. God shall send them strong delusion. What does it say? Ponder this for a minute. The Romans 9.21. You don't have to turn there. Hath not the potter power over the clay? Why? Of the same lump. A lot of people don't pick that up. Of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and one vessel unto dishonor. Now, some people want to fight about that word dishonor. Well, look at the Greek and you'll see what it means. It means what? Infamy and disgrace. That's what it means. But here's the point. There's no difference between you and them. Yeah. Some, it's from the same lump. But God makes, creates, molds, forms vessels unto honor. Yeah. And the others are vessels unto dishonor. That's what it says, and that's what it means. What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the what? Vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Now, if you want to get upset about the word dishonor, don't look at vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Trust me, it's going to make you even matter. But you understand... What Paul wrote here in 2 Thessalonians says, 
that they all might be damned who believe not the truth. You understand? Those are strong words. They are strong words, but they are nonetheless true words. They're true. They're true. What did he say? I also will choose their delusions. And God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now just think about this for a minute. How surprised are many people, a multitude of people, how surprised are they going to be when Jesus Christ is revealed as very God of very God? How surprised is this multitude, the same multitude, going to be when the King of Kings and Lord of Lords returns? Well, I think some might be surprised to death. I know some will be surprised enough to cry out for the rocks and the mountains to fall upon them and hide them. They'll be surprised when they see the real, the real Lord Jesus Christ. The one whose hand held the king's heart and turned it whithersoever he will. When they see him robed in splendor and covered with the glory of God. Because he is coming. And this is the one thing. Your delusion might give you a lot of pleasure and unrighteousness. But your delusion can't save you. The delusion can't save you. And I'll tell you another thing. The delusion can't stop him. There's lots of people who think they can say no God. Or say no to God. They're going to find out different. They're going to find out different. Because your delusion, their delusion, cannot stop the Lord of glory. It's not going to happen. The true Christ will bear no resemblance to the one that is mostly preached in this country. That is most popularly heard. They won't recognize him. They'll see no resemblance in the one they heard preached because he's not coming meek and mild. He's coming in power and in glory such as the world has never seen. He's coming with King of Kings and Lord of Lords written on his vesture and on his thigh. And he's coming to rule and to reign over this world. And it's going to happen. And then, my friends, my brethren, their delusions may be shattered. But understand, do understand this. We who believe now were at one time just like them. You understand? We were blind to the gospel at one time. There's always hope. God will save his people out of the world. Because believers at one time were not only murderers and blasphemers and all that whole list, but believers were at one time Jews. Believers were at one time even Baptists. Methodists, Lutherans, Pentecostals, and even Catholics. Some believers before time were even pagans. Salvation is of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's by his grace, through his faith, to the saving of the soul. Because, and here's the great thing, for believers, Jesus Christ will come as the one I desire to see. He's the one I'm looking for. He's the one you're looking for. They're not looking for him. They're looking for their Jesus. They're not looking for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. They're not looking for this, but I am. And I believe you are. We're looking for the one who gave his life for all that the Father gave to him. We're looking for the good shepherd to return who laid down his life for his sheep. And he's coming. He's coming. Oh, he's coming. The one, the Jesus Christ 
who calls his sheep, his people, to eternal life by the power of his voice. Oh, what does it say in uh, verse 5 of Isaiah 66? They said, let the Lord be glorified when they kicked you out. But here it is. The Lord's going to be glorified. But he, the Lord, shall appear to your joy. And they shall be ashamed. Let the Lord be glorified. He shall appear to your joy if you're a believer because we are looking for the sovereign Lord Jesus Christ. I want to see the one who saved me. I want to see the one who saved me. The Lord Jesus Christ. I understand there's all kind of people out there. They're going to... They're, they're looking for... the their Savior, Jesus Christ, their buddy, Jesus Christ. No, we're looking for the Lord, the Lord to come, the one who rules and reigns now and forever. Of his kingdom, there'll be no end. I'm looking for the one who gave every one of his people the garments of salvation and the robe of his righteousness. Oh, and here's the thing. Until he comes, I want to hear people talk about him. I want to come and hear his word preached. I want to hear the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Until he comes. Until he comes. Oh, my. Oh, because to those who are not now under this delusion, those who believe, those who know Christ, what is it? The appearance, the presence, even the preaching of Jesus Christ is glorious and joyous. It's a good thing to hear Christ preached. I like that. I do. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful for you. You have sent your son and he gave himself for his sheep, for the ones that you gave to him out of the world. He prayed for them. He's praying for them. He intercedes for them now. He's calling them out of the world, calling them, translating them out of what? Darkness into the kingdom of his marvelous light. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. Be with Walter and Paul as they come to preach your word, your way, your life, and you being the Lord of glory that you are. We ask in Christ's name, amen.